What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bogey Proof. First episode of 2023. We are excited. We're back. You got Mikey, Eric, and myself, Matt, on the line tonight. Gentlemen, how are we? Where are we calling from? What are we sipping on? The usual. Good, good. Yeah. Happy New Year's, boys. Happy New um, Year. Checking in from home in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's been, I think, the whole East Coast, it's been pretty damn warm these last few days it was, it's been like 70 the last three days here um i ordered some chipotle for dinner tonight went and picked it up in shorts and a t-shirt nice. uh, but yeah so definitely not your normal new year's weather um i'm sipping on a boulevard EA, um bourbon cocktail made with some four roses mm. oh. my mm. favorite mm. yeah Eric, that sounds like just a simple life. That that brought me back to simpler times right there. <laughs> T-shirt, shorts, Chipotle, fancy cocktail <laughs> for me for a loop there. But um, Ashley's in West Palm, so I'm fending for myself this week. Yeah, yeah, just just trying to keep it like on the track, <laughs> trying to keep it on the tracks, like just away from any bad yeah. situations. Yeah, understood. <laughs> um, Mike here, calling in from you know South Denver area. Um, a little bit chilly out here. Um, but excited to be back and back in a little bit of routine traveled for almost two weeks around the holidays. So I felt like I was at half capacity working at, working at home, just like with the lack of, just because I usually talk to coaches and some students and like my, the, my team, we work kind of, you know, quite a bit, just like yelling across the, you know, in like the business suite area. So, uh, it's been an event for the last couple of days back at work, but it's been good sipping on a, an upslope brewery, right? It's based out of Boulder, Citra Pale Ale. I would say when I think of my go-to beer the last couple of years, if I'm not trying to suck them down, not, you know, we're not talking about the Miller Lights, Coors Lights, you know, category. I would say this is probably my favorite type of beer, like a super floral kind of juicy, like aromatic beer. That's got a little bit of punch. This is 5.8%, right? Kind of in that comfy zone where you can you can survive, but if you have two or three, like you could you can feel it all over. So that's kind of where I want to be uh, most times. But yeah, uh, you know, just enjoying kind of a, a local beer, probably an hour up the road from from where we are here in the apartment. So, Matt, what do you got? That sounds like some good stuff. 5.8% is right in that sweet spot where. You're not getting anywhere near seven, seven and a half, like some of those IPAs get to where you get yourself in trouble. But like you said, you can feel it after a couple too. It's a nice balance. But uh, it's January, boys. It's that time of year again. Dry January is off and running. We are four days in. Things are good. The holidays is always just – I just eat every freaking day from the 23rd through like the 3rd or whatever it was this year, just eating cookies and whatever, just feel like shit. So – Dry January, getting the body back on track. Um, layer that into my goals in a little bit here. But, so yeah, I'm just drinking water tonight. I'm ready to uh, start watching some golf again, start talking golf again, all the good stuff. So, without further ado, we'll get into it. This week, the PGA Tour kicks off its season at uh, Kapalua in Hawaii. One of Honestly, one of my favorites of the year. Just the views are on point for this tournament. They do a good job with the angles. The property is insane. And it is one of the... We can get into this at some point. The four elevated events, I think, this year on the PGA Tour schedule. So the purse is like twenty million bucks or something crazy. <laughs> Average PGA Tour purse is like between eight and nine for like a non-major, um, non-players event. So a lot going on, a lot of discuss. But what are you guys looking forward to at uh, Kapalua and as we get into the twenty twenty three uh, golf season? Matt, I think you brought it up. Like this beyond like the golf the court, golf course is interesting i don't know if it's like a spectacular you know they shoot a million under right so it's not a spectacular test by any means but when you talk views weather like just the scale of the golf course and and what they do this week this is one of the most fun like weeks i would i would say of the year from a viewing perspective i also think this is one of those places that I could just, I mean, this is a place I'd want to go vacation and play golf, which I think is, you know, in when you're not talking about a major championship and it's sometimes a little difficult to get up for when you can kind of be like, Oh, that place would be sweet to, to go and, and play some golf and, you know, spend a few days or spend a week that, that kind of shows the level and the caliber of, of, you know, of the property and the tournament and all those good things. So 
I agree. I mean, when it's cold out and you just see those, you know, the other islands kind of mountains in the background on some of these like drop down par fours, um, super, super cool. I'm just excited to see him get back into action. The fall is kind of a fucking joke. We know this, right? Like, um, you know, excited to kind of see the, the merge of the winners last year, the young guys and kind of this, you know, what kind of energy does this, um, elevated field look like, right. Um, you know, minus some of the live guys, right. So interested to kind of get started and see some of those storylines happen playing for 20 million. So, I mean, like, gotta, gotta get up for it at some point. Yeah. Uh, also, I mean, building upon that, like the views and stuff, Stuff like that just like the, the v- tv viewing of this event it's the it's the first event back in a few weeks that actually feels like it means a little bit of something um but one of my favorite parts about this event is the time of day that it's on tv being in hawaii it's on and in the evening especially here on the east coast it's night golf here we get to get home from work have some dinner and then watch live golf which is very very rare so um, that's one of my favorite things I look forward to to this event every year is um, just watching it in the evenings, relaxing at night and watching some night golf when there's not a, a whole lot of other sports on this time of year, too. Yeah. yeah, if you're not if you're not making yourself a little Mai Tai Pina Colada, you know, in a you know, dry January, what are you sipping on when you're trying to enjoy yourself? How do you how do you re- how do you relax? Honestly, I don't know. I might have to start doing like a mocktail thing, like getting into those, like cause yeah. just because like I'm not going to like I don't like soda. I don't like I, I haven't drank regular like a Coca-Cola in forever. So it's not like a soda, you know, water gets bored. I'm not going to just like start drinking like maybe like an Arnold Palmer. I don't know. I, I don't drink anything that's not water or, you know, like so I might get into mocktails or something like that. So I don't all of a sudden get like a sugar addiction drinking like iced teas and lemonades and things of that nature over the next month but we'll have to see because yeah. i think especially this weekend like eric said like the primetime golf especially really like this month and into february when they're doing the california swing the primetime golf on tv is just like prime like you said get home from work cook a little dinner while like it's ramping up and then settle in for like the back nine prime coverage of like you know all the t- you know especially this time of year like all the good names are playing out there so it is. I mean, I'm gonna have to figure something out because I don't think water's gonna do it. My mocktails might be a thing. Matt, the the athletic non alcoholic beers are pretty legit. Oh, noted. Right in there. They're out of. Sh- I mean, I think too, and I do like those, Eric. I've had a. I probably had two or three different ones. They have like the Mosaic IPA, which is actually a pretty legit IPA. Hmm. Um, who knows? Fontaine with this new bar like you gotta you gotta cater to all the all the people around so maybe you know maybe a six pack of a couple non-alcoholic beers a couple uh a couple Heineken zeros maybe a Guinness zero down there um just you know just to support those who who choose not to indulge too much it is a big bar I got a lot of room so I'm gonna have to fill it with something and like you said it's good to have a variety got to give people options got to be a good host (laughs) yes um but outside of you know kapalua like elevated event i think 17 of the top 20 in the world are going to be there a bunch of guys showing up i know century always gets or uh yeah tournament champions always gets a relatively good field anyways but seems like a lot of big names a lot of fun golf to get back you know get the engines going again for the 2023 golf season the fall is a drag we had the president's cup it wasn't you know it's no rider cup by any means you know it's just it drags you know all the the florida stuff to do with the qb things of that nature it's just last year was a busy year in golf so i unplugged a little bit let's get the engines revving again here at kapalua but what are you guys looking forward to outside of this specific week 2023 season preview majors up and comer guy up and coming guys resurgences of careers what do you guys think of or what do you look forward to when you think in 2023 first thing that comes to my mind is the rejoining of live and pga tour players at the masters yeah i mean the first time that they're really all back together um and just what's going to happen uh i mean i really hope that they're going to let the masters be in the spotlight and not their relationships but you never know and you also you never know what questions reporters are going to ask and stuff like that so um that's the first thing that comes to my mind for this season and what i'm kind of like intrigued the most by 
Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see how it plays out now that it's kind of – it feels like it's slowly transitioning out of the recruiting phase, right? Like, I don't see yeah. any big waves changing anytime soon of players. Like, it was in that couple of months around the U.S. Open last year where it was just, like, four or five names at a time kind of leaving or whatever. I don't think it's – they're done getting players, but I just don't see it happening in chunks as much as it did last year. So, it will be interesting to see how that plays out through the year and how much of the spotlight it grabs – I mean, they don't, their schedule being smaller, I mean, they don't really ramp up until the summer anyways for, uh, for their own, like, live tour. So we'll see how it goes, like you said, at the Masters and things of that nature. And, you know, U.S. Open and Open and PGA, I think, still have to comment. I think – I assume they're just going to revert similar to the Masters of – if they meet the criteria we have, they're good. We're not going to do any special in or outs, whatever. But we'll see how that all plays out too. So that will be definitely a storyline um, in 2023 again. I think the most intriguing thing, and I mean, this is not unique to 2023, but like these first three months, kind of seeing what people emerge, right? What people from, what rookies, what stalwarts on the European tour decide, hey, this is my year to kind of chase the PGA tour, whatever that may be. Like, I think these first three months are super intriguing because we have a just a new group of elite golfers that have entered the fold onto the best tour in the world. And like, what happens, right? Do they come in? Do they really struggle? Do they dominate? What storylines emerge, right? We have guys who are studs and four-time All-Americans in college. We have, you know, people, 40-year-old rookies. We have people like Ben Griffin who quit golf and, you know, jumped into another thing and then win multiple times on web.com. Like, you know, finishes third at rsm like just some of these interesting storylines and kind of seeing them come to fruition right we know about them because we consume golf all the time whether that be on tv or social media or whatever that looks like but kind of seeing some of these storylines um come to fruition a little bit more and maybe become the headlines of of the first few months um you know a really i mean the West Coast swing and, and everything, and then the Florida swing and whatever, like there's a big variety of golf and there's a big opportunity, you know, no matter where kind of your strength lies, um, the types of golf courses or geography or, or whatever that looks like, there's a little bit for everybody. Everyone's going to probably have their chance to, to have really good tournament or win a tournament, get into the Masters. So just kind of seeing how some of these new new people acclimate themselves to the tour and, and kind of, you know, what waves uh, they, they cause here before the Masters. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be, you know, this year's Cam Young, this year's Davis Riley, you know, people of that nature that really like Taylor Montgomery kind of showed up last year. You know, like those guys that you all you if you you ask yourself this question last year at this time, you're like, who the hell is that? And now Cam Young is like President's Cup team member, almost won the Open Championship, top 10 in another, whatever, like awesome year, rookie of the year, all those things like who's going to come from the clouds. It's always interesting. There's such a good crop of young players between corn Ferry, PGA tour. You now they got going on. That's going to get some exemptions and stuff later in the year. A lot of different ways to kind of see the new young talent kind of backfill. Cause the young talent that like we probably initially think of when you think of young talent, the JTs, Jordans, et cetera, they're 30 now, yeah. you know, like they're not young. It's they're, they're kind of in the primes, you know, they're in their, you know, meteor closer to the middle than they are at the beginning of their careers or closer to the end, whatever you want to call it. And it's like, who's going to be that next crop? Like, you know, like you had Joaquin Neiman, you had think guys of that nature that, you know, Joaquin left, but like that kind of next crop, who's going to kind of backfill that now that Mm -hmm. some live guys have left. And, you know, as we kind of, as our young guy generation kind of gets old, (laughs) you know, there any, um, majors is there any obviously we talked a little masters but any venues or predictions that you are looking forward to or kind of foresee happening i know la country club is supposed to be unbelievable i don't really know anything about it other than what i've heard so i have to do a little research on my own but i am looking forward to seeing something out there um and i just i I'm obviously ready to be heard again with Rory. Just going to pick him to all four majors this year. So he's got to, just going to shoot bullets and hopefully he catches one of them. But. I, I mean, I, I'm in, I'm intrigued by Oak Hill, Rochester, New York in May, right? What does that golf course look like? Um, little insider information just with my, my cousin Lindsay's one of like, she's 
managing all the volunteers and some form of operation. I don't know exactly. We didn't get much of a chance to talk over over Christmas about kind of what's going on there. Um, but it, it appears they are going full bore and it's going to be uh, in tremendous shape. They had the restoration, you know, a year or two ago. And uh, I think they're primed for, for a pretty unique tournament. I think the PGA is carving out kind of this little, this little segment here, right? Like Southern Hills was just, it was a little odd, but it was, it was pretty cool last year. Right. And I think now we're bringing it to an old school championship golf course in new England in May. Like it could be, it could be 55 and, and blowing sideways. Like that's a reality. Yeah. And there's a reality that the greens don't like, don't come through the winter appropriately and yeah. we're like dealing with a big time saga. So I don't, I don't know. I think there's like, there's so many variables for that one that I'm just intrigued as to how it goes. And, you know, then kind of debrief with Lindsay on the back end, just like, okay, well, I saw from a consumer standpoint, yeah. the mayhem going on now, what was happening internally uh, for, you know, for, to put, to produce a major championship, like, like they did. So yeah, it's another one I don't know a ton about offhand. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sure leading up, I'll do some research and, you know, people will put out some content that I can get some insight in. But yeah, I always love kind of new, ma new major venues if it's one that doesn't really stand out with a ton of context. I'd rather just start fresh than go to one that I'm like, eh. Uh, so, looking forward to this year. And then I think it's Royal Liverpool for the Open. So, a big major season as always. Most important tournaments of the year. So. We'll see how those go. I love that they're every month now. I know they did that a couple of years ago, but I just think that it just it keeps you engaged for like three, four months straight. Every tournament seems to matter, and every it's either an off week for for a reason or it's a big event like WGC, these new elevated events, etc. So, looking forward to the PGA Tour schedule this year, majors, all that fun stuff. So, we'll see how that goes. But without further ado, I'm good. I was going to throw in too some the. Uh, some am venues are pretty elite this year Ooh, usa they are they are mid sleepy hollow yeah sleepy hollow is legit for the minute that's pretty sweet <laughs> a, a four balls at kiowa oh there you go <laughs> nice uh we well, yeah, not, i mean have us to, have to get up watch some of the usam yeah uh i mean so i have a couple things and then yeah so before we get to the USAM, US Junior Girls is at Air Force Academy, which is like 45 minutes down the road. Um, mm -hmm. And our women's golf coach was like, yeah, we're heading that, you know, we'll go down a couple of days and, and hang out and, and watch some recruits and stuff like that. So that'll be fun to, to go down there. And, and I don't think I've ever watched a junior girls event especially like a high level so uh you know maybe i'll see like the next lpj you know star who's like 13 um and then yes uh in the middle of august usam here in denver cherry hills 15 minutes away uh and then was it colorado golf club maybe 10 minutes away so both super close um i've never heard like my cousin Ryan, I've never heard him talk about like wanting to qualify for these things. Kind of just, he's always been, Hey, you know, trying to get better, trying to do this A, B, and C. He like explicitly said, like, I'm going to play in the USAM this year. So I'm excited about that. Hopefully his game, his game seems good. Obviously it's trending in the right direction. And, um, so, you know, praying that that works out, that would be a super fun week uh, to have some family out here and, and follow along and do that. And, you know, lucky enough to be in a situation that could help, right? Place to stay, university owns a golf course, have, you know, access to track mans and all that kind of thing where it can really help him, um, you know, do some of that stuff and, and be a part of that process. So it would be a, would be a, a fun event. And yeah, regardless if he doesn't make it, I'm, I mean, I'm going to go out and watch a little golf. You don't get an access to go walk around Cherry Hills or Colorado Golf Club, uh, you know, just, just by the wayside. So you got to get some boots on the ground. That'll be good to see new mm -hmm. courses, new areas. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I know you've kind of offline. We've talked about like just the, the altitude and the yardages that are out there for some of the courses like university of Denver specifically. 
I'm interested to see how, you know, again, hopefully your cousin's game kind of gets him there as he wants to go. But I'm interested to see how, like, firsthand from his, like, experience, how that change, like, really is, like, how quickly he can get comfortable in a totally different altitude, new numbers, new whatever, et cetera, especially when you're trying to play at that elite of a level and there's that much pressure. So definitely be interesting to get kind of, like, firsthand experience of that kind of stuff. It would be pretty cool. So, yeah, it's a, lot, a lot of good stuff, 2023. AM venues, PGA Tour venues, all the good stuff, major venues. Just I'm excited for golf again. Got a little burnt out last year in the fall. Recharge the batteries and ready to go again. Kapalu always gets the juices flowing, so we'll ride right into that. But without further ado, 2023 goals. We did our 2022 goals last year. We kind of debriefed them back in the fall. Some good, some bad, some in the middle. Some good golf, some good non-golf, whatever. You know, we kind of, I'd say we were all right around like a, like 50 to 70% success rate at the high end. Uh, if you kind of call them, if you I, rope them I'm, all in. I was definitely on the I'm lower gonna, end of that. I'm going gonna, 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 to say I passed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a letter yeah, on Yeah, you know, if we did a pass fail, we all passed. <laughs> but don't ask any more questions after that. <laughs> hey, that's all you need sometimes. So Exactly. All right, who wants to kick us off with – I mean, you can go with your golf first, personal first, do them all at once, whatever you want to go, but who wants to kick us off with their 2023 goals? I think we do. Well, I think we do kind of round table. you know, do each do each section if that works. Yeah. Um, Eric, why don't you start us off with, with whatever category and then we'll, we'll you know, uh, snake it from there. All right. I'm going um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to actually start off with a little bonus category. Oh, um, okay. I threw together those quick little uh, bogey-proof goals I I came up with from for kind of myself and us. Yep. Um, three, just really quick. All four of us on twelve podcast episodes this year. Um, especially this last year, a lot of us were had a lot of life things going on. With you moving, Mike and Matt, you bought a house, and um, we didn't have a very consistent uh representation of the bogey-proof crew on the pod. Um six non-golf episodes um i think i've had some of like the most fun on the podcast when we're talking about random stuff sometimes not necessarily golf so six non-golf episodes and then um start planning or or get a plan in place for the next little bogey proof retreat and uh whether it's in the next 12 months or 18 months at least start working on a plan for it it's been about a year a little over about a year and a half since new hampshire um and that was that was pre bogey proof even really existing so um i think it's time that when we're due for another little get together and play some golf all four of us together we've had parts of the group together at various times playing together but not all four of us um and mike the the wheels got turning in my head when we were talking about the usam i think a little late summer colorado trip oh god could, yeah could, that could be I mean it's it's an open invite. I'm I'm <laughs> you know, I for me, candidly, like I never into I never kind of put myself as someone who would live in Colorado. I think there's a lot of people um who kind of dreamed of moving out west or you know, wanting to kind of live this lifestyle. Um never was something that I kind of made a priority, but I, you know, I think this is gonna be uh, a two, three, four year tenure for me, most likely. And I want as many people to come out here, uh, you know, and we'll see it a bunch in kind of my personal, my personal goals here, of, you know, just about kind of, you know, enjoying what it, what it has to offer and, um, you know, being present and enjoying. And part of that is, you know, is getting the buddies out here, hitting the ball 350 off the tee, just letting it fly. Um, so I, I'm hundred percent on board on that. We'll get the air mattresses out. Uh, we'll cook a steak dinner. We'll drink some red wine. We'll be all set. Say less. Pretty... <laughs> I'll book my tickets tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me, tell me when, and we'll be there. <laughs> That's Matt's motto. Yep. Tell me when I got to, where I got to be, when I got to be there, and I'll see you there. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll go straight into, um, we'll go golf in the middle. So the three categories, I think that we all like have somewhat of our goals themed around uh, golf, personal, professional. Um, I'm going to start it off with, with professional. Um, I don't think for personal and professional, we need to go through every single one of ours and we can focus a little bit more on the golf ones. But um, the two, I think, most important professional ones for me, um, the first one are first one's shadow managers at three different 
golf clubs in three different states. I'm kind of at a point in my career where I'm really trying to figure out what is next, what kind of club is next, and what kind of club is the end goal. Um, and I'm lately have really been trending towards um, golf focused clubs. Um, and I just haven't really been truly exposed to many in my career. I've always worked at country clubs and rather large country clubs and that um, on that note. So I've been talking to some people in the industry and just being able to spend some time at some different golf clubs up and down the East coast. Um, the three I've got picked out right now are uh, go spend a day at Baltus Shrawl. Um, I've already spent a day at Kinlock in Richmond here. And then um, going down to uh, South Carolina and going to Yeamans hall, um, which is three pretty different clubs, um, three really different memberships and kind of getting to see a little bit of everything there. Um, just to learn a little bit more about what I might want to do next and where I might want to do it. So um, that's one of my goals for this year. Um, and then the next one, uh, I'd say the next biggest one professional is fulfill education credits for CCM exam. Um, so CCM exam is a professional designation in the club industry, certified club manager. Um, it entails quite a few things, um, but one of the biggest things within the requirements to be able to sit for the exam is um, 300 education credits um, that are broken up into various different types of education. So I'm about 40 credits away um, from fulfilling my those 300 education credits. So I think I can knock that out this year, um, doing some online stuff and some in-person stuff and um, be one step closer to being able to sit for, for that exam. So those are, the, those are the key professional goals. I've got a few other ones that are a little more detailed, but uh, yeah. I like the shadowing. That's a good way to like, and especially like I said, you're doing three different ones. You got to cast like a broad net if you want to see stuff, you know, if you go to the same type of club, even if you go to three of them, you're going to be getting a pretty similar experience. So it's like where you're at there. It's a good strategy. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I will go with my professional goals. I don't have quite too many this year, but going into year two at my current, firm so I just my biggest thing this year is now that I kind of have my feet under me a little you know baseline knowledge is set and how our systems work all that fun stuff is just to like expand that into get into some like reviewer roles and things of that nature and like you know be able to delegate or just do things more efficiently in a, in a way to open myself up to you know special projects bigger projects newer projects things of that nature now that I've kind of set my baseline knowledge down but not a ton on the professional side for me this year. I'm not going back to school. I've already done the the tests and the exams, fortunately. So I'm not I'm not adding any more letters next to my name. I'm good. <laughs> I got enough. But Mikey, how about yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I'm a little more along the lines of of Eric having uh kind of changed industries and, and being in a new role here this last, you know, four months or so. I'm I'm at a point where uh, professional growth is a, is a big priority for me um, and really kind of growing within this industry and within this position. So a lot of my, a lot of my time, um, you know, for better or worse, uh, you know, is going to be, is going to be focused in this area kind of this year. Um, but a couple of highlights. So uh, along the lines of kind of educational credits, you know, I think a big, a big thing for me is attending multiple national conferences both in the intercollegiate athletic space and then also just the broader higher ed space. I'm lucky to, to have a, a job in a university that supports me to do that types of things. So, you know, an ability to, to network, but also, um, you know, dive into some of the current research that's going on and, and kind of just really be present and, and, and learn as much as possible. Um, the game plan at the moment, I got I to gotta finalize a couple of things in the next couple of weeks to make it happen. Uh, but the game plan is to start a doctorate program here in September. Um, so that'll take up a little bit of time and be uh, something I do part-time probably for the next seven, eight years of my life. They're just uh, a little bit of time, know, so. not, not much for the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> hey, I, hey, if I, if I wasn't working, I could do it in like four, but uh, uh, and <laughs> the work's paying for it. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And then kind of the last professional highlight here. So as part of kind of my duties here at the university is, overseeing uh, the financial and budget components of, of some of our teams. So I have eight teams kind of underneath me. 
Um, and the goal is that in 2023, I travel with each of those teams uh, on, on a trip or an away game or whatever that looks like, uh, an opportunity to, to connect with coaches and student athletes and see how they operate and, and see kind of what it takes uh, for them to be, you know, to put the best product on the field, the court, the rink, whatever. Um, so really kind of boots on the grounds and take, you know, my job is often kind of a little bit high level. Um, and so, you know, just really get into the details and, and see what they're doing uh, and just how I can support them as a, as they're, you know, one of their administrators um, and just an opportunity to, to travel some cool places, whether that be Southern California, Hawaii, South Dakota, you know, middle of nowhere, Canada. We got, we got lots of different options in the sports we have here at the University of Denver. So nothing like going from Hawaii to South Dakota, nothing like it. <laughs> we have conference basketball conference championships in Sioux Falls. So that would be an interesting one. And then in, uh, in March here. Nice. <laughs> good stuff good to add some little context like you said from the high level to you got to get some context a little granularity learn about the players you know go a long <laughs> way and uh i'll i'll start i'll start this next one i'll go let's go like eric said let's go into golf here in the middle um high level too my goal is to be as i'm trying to be as realistic as humanly possible here with my golf goals um i have tendency to aim high which i think is good uh, but sometimes that's not realistic and that just leads to frustration and disappointment and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, the goal is to, to qualify for a couple of tournaments. Um, Colorado AM is at the longest golf course in, in North America. So that would just be a super cool experience. 80, almost 8,500 yards. I think it was, um, you know, driver probably flies 380 out there, honestly. Uh, so that would be cool. Mid AM is in, is up in the mountains too. So that would be a lot of fun. But the two, the two kind of back end ones I think are the most interesting are I want to play, in, I'm going to call it a destination event. That means I get on a plane or I get my car and I go play in a mid-am or a four ball or some sort of invitational in a place that I've never been before. Go spend four or five days, enjoy the culture, go out to dinner, see everything that it is, and also kind of prepare and, and do what you can to perform well in a golf tournament. I just think... I'm at the point in my life where that is kind of like the most intriguing part about golf is that the places that it takes you and the people that you meet. Um, so really would like to kind of get into a routine of doing some of that. And then from a technical standpoint, this year, I'm going to develop an elite short game, an elite short game. I just find myself not wanting to beat golf balls, but loving to chip and putt and do all those, all those types of things. And, um, I, I think my short game is good. It's been serviceable. Uh, but this is the year where I really put in some work and I have an elite short game uh, and it allows me to, to play well, whether it's in a tournament or buddy's trip or just a casual round. I think uh, that's, that's where some of my time and my dedication is going to be put forth and I'll be getting up and down from, you know, <laughs> I don't know. The trees, the bunkers. Yeah. Right? The truth. Yeah, my bunker game is terrible, so maybe we'll work on that. But <laughs> there you go. I like that. I like the destination golf thing. That's a that's a good one. I, I think I might have to steal that one for next year. But I'll go next. We'll do a little reverse snake here. Uh, my golf goals rolling over a couple from last year. Got to get the handicap starting with a plus sign. We got down to under a one, but we did not get the plus this year. Made a late push, but. It was a bad spring last year, but um, which I think is very doable. Just anything that starts with a plus, it, we should be able to should be able to get there if we just you know maintain some focus and you know log the rounds. What I want to do new this year is I want to track more stats. I'm not a big stats guy, especially of my own. Like in the gin app, I enter the front nine, back nine. I don't do the individual hole, all these things. But I do want to do a better job, even if it's not individual hole and like, you know, my par three average and things of that nature, tracking like birdies, doubles and putts per round. Like I want to do something that will give me a better answer as to like, how are you playing or like good or bad? You know, like, I don't know, like I feel like last year, even when I played well or bad, like I didn't really know exactly why, just other than I just like executed a little bit better. But I want to kind of track some stats this year and maybe the what I'm tracking changes as the year goes on but I want to track something so I have a little bit more like feedback on like you know the kind of 
the game within the game of like not just my final score, you know. So we're gonna start with like birdies, doubles, and putts, and see where that gets me after a couple months. And then maybe if I'm not really getting anything out of it, maybe I'll adjust and do greens and fairways, etc. Things of that nature. We'll see kind of what I get the most out of. But that's something I want to make a conscious effort of this year, just so I have a little bit more feedback and I kind of practice with more of a purpose because I feel like when I don't track those things I'm just you know I just have my routine of okay I go to the range I work on certain things I you know work on tempo whatever just I have like the base drills I go do every week or whatever it is and it's like you're not if you're just kind of doing those blindly I don't feel like I'm like pinpointing any problems I'm just like adding a blanket you know practice on but not that that's a bad thing but I want to have a little bit more focus to it this year and then my other two golf goals I want to incorporate a final check into my like pre-shot routine, just like a final run through the list real quick. Even like I picture it as like Jason Day does his like stand behind the ball. I'm not going to like close my eyes and meditate for 40 minutes like he does, but just like stand behind the ball real quick and just be like, all right, like, am I doing anything like extremely dumb here? Cause I found myself this year, like there'd be where there's a tournament round or, anything I'd have like this four or five hole stretch where I'm like, I don't even know what I just did for the last hour. And I just made five shitty bogeys in a row or a double or whatever. And I'm just like, I just like grabbed a club and like, I didn't even think through the whole shot, you know? So I'm going to try to incorporate some sort of like, all right, like am I doing anything outrageously stupid? You know, just like a little last minute, like, but it honestly is just like a way to help myself just stay focused for every shot of every round, you know, like it's obviously super cliche, and I, you, you like know that, but I'm going to try to incorporate something into my routine that actually makes me do that. Cause I found myself a lot of times this year when I cared about a round, come out of the gates, super locked in, kind of fall asleep for holes like eight through 14. And then all of a sudden, like, holy shit, uh, I got four holes left to, you know, either land this plane or get it back on track, whatever you want to call it. And I would just like make really like mental errors along the way that I'd be like, that's very avoidable. So we're going to try to limit the avoidable mistakes this year. And then lastly, just kind of short game on your line, Mikey. I just want to practice short game in one way or another, an hour a week. Whether it's putting, I got like, I got a little mat, you know, down in the basement or when the course is on back up, like going up and just hang out in the short game area for an hour, once a week. That's all it needs. It doesn't have to be all in one day. It can spread it out if I got stuff going on, whatever. One hour a week, short game practice. Just to add some consistency. That's all we need, but we'll see. Fontaine, know. you are deep in the process right now. You're I am. deep in the 2023. Process. I'm trying to find a. I'm trying to find a way to heighten the ceiling here. You know, the floor's been wherever. You know, yeah. It's like the you know the high 70s is kind of the floor when I'm playing consistently or whatever. I don't haven't taken it deep in years, so I'm trying to find a way to get a number starting with a six on a scorecard every once in a while. You know, like play a lot of good rounds and just shoot like, you know, even one under one over two over whatever. And I feel like I play the same for that. And it's like, I feel like I play good when I shoot those. And it's like, I know I can make five birdies, but it's like, I'll have three bogeys in there that were just sloppy. And all of a sudden it's a 72 instead of a 69, whatever. So trying to find a way to take it deep this year. And we're going to see if it's the stats. You're going to, I, I, Fontaine, you're going to take the governor off this year. I can already tell. That's, that's what um, I was looking for. I want to take the governor off this take year. Take the governor <laughs> off, take the top off, whatever you want to call it. Take the top um, off the defense this year. I got to find a way how. That's what we're going to try to do. Yep. But those are my golf goals. That was long winded. <laughs> Eric, on to you. <laughs> All, right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to start with one that is pretty similar to yours there, Matt, with the, uh, the stats. Um, so, I started last year uh, inputting my scores in gin hole by hole. And it's, I thought it was a great tool one to be able to track some stats, but then also two to be able to kind of just reflect on the round for a little bit. It takes five minutes going through hole by hole in your head. What I did on that hole. Um, so building upon that um, and looking at kind of my stats from last year in the gin app, biggest weakness was par three scoring um i think my par three scoring average was like 3.6 or something um so goal is to get it under three five um i posted 34 scores with stats last year so that's 
3.6 out of those 34 rounds. Um, so around that same, that same amount of, of rounds posted, we're looking for a par three scoring average under 3.5, I think is, um, a pretty reasonable goal. Um, and then similar again to one of yours, a, a practice note, um, and similar to Mike's with the short game practice, I want to practice putting three hours a month. Um, I, whether it's two, one and a half hour sessions, four less than an hour sessions, um, I think three hours a month is about two and a half hours more a month than I practice putting this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, similar to kind of what Mike said about just like beating balls on the range and stuff. I just don't really like practicing at all. Um, so I definitely need to figure out ways that will make it a little bit more entertaining, um, especially on the putting green, especially with how hot it can get in Virginia in the middle of the summer. Um, but that's, that's the goal with the practice is to practice three hours a month, whether it's 20 minutes after I play nine holes in the evening or what, um, we're going to try to get to three hours a month. Um, and then tournament related, these are both pretty similar to a couple of goals I had for last year. One of them is actually the same exact goal qualified for the state am. Um, I thought that was a, that was a great goal that kind of kicked off my golf season last year with, um, just kind of preparing for this season, given that qualifying is in like May and June here in Virginia. So, um, qualify for the state am is, is one of my competitive golf goals again this year. Um, and then, uh, top 10 at the state mid am. Um, I think that that's definitely a little bit of a stretch goal, but, um, I was there after the first round this year and kind of just like mentally fell out of it a little bit the last, the next two rounds. Um, so that's kind of my biggest challenge to myself. It'll be towards the end of the golf season too, again, in, in October. Um, and kind of seeing if I can put together three solid rounds over the course of 54 holes. So, um, those are, those are my golf goals. I'm um, kind of trying to build a little bit upon um, the goals from last year that I think were pretty successful and keep it going. I like it. Simple, simple yet effective. Cause you were the only one that I think hit <laughs> golf goals last year. So it's <laughs> all right. Fontaine. I'm, I'm trying to take the, take the top off this year too. Maybe shoot, <laughs> shoot like a 65 early in the year and just see where it takes me. But I'll hang them up if I shoot a 65 early in the year. My goal is I'm going to check them all off, even if I don't get to them, and I'm Fon- just enjoy the rest of the summer. Fontaine, you never know. Just I, I mean, know. remember back in Florida last year when I shot like 80 the first day, and then was like seven under through 14 holes. Like it's it's in there. It's in there. So I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what I did. The only thing diff- The only thing I did in between rounds one and two was uh, sleep in like a Star Wars themed bedroom. <laughs> As, with a lightsaber as your nightlight <laughs> like that's the only thing i did i you know i don't i and i think we had some like uh grocery store fried chicken or something so i don't know if that's the difference. formula for success and i didn't finish that round off like i would have liked to but it's i mean you, you don't know you just have to be ready you got to be ready for it to happen um you know regardless of of you know what the last round was or what the last week or month was um you know you're you're more than capable of of standing on the you know the the six t at at Indian Hill three under par and just being like all right what's going on here what, what yeah. you know where's it going to go from here so yeah. we'll see we'll see who wants to kick off our a non or was it personal or last quarter category let's kick off personal goals I can loop it back around all right reverse sneak. All right. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go. I'm going to pick out three of mine here cuz I had a few personal goals and some of them were kind of small. Um first one's read 8 books. Last year I think it, it was read 12 books and I read 4. Um so <laughs> dropping it down a little bit. I think 8 is an attainable number. Um especially I think this year it was a little mental. I was at like 3 books in like October. And was like, oh, well, I'm not getting to 12. And so I kind of gave up a little bit. Um, so I think four, if I think eight books is, is a very attainable number. Um, and I've, I'm about half a book in on January 4th here. So we're off to a good start. Good pace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Next one is going to be uh, stretch four times a week. I kind of started this one about two months ago. Um, I've not nearly been doing four times a week. I've been doing like once or twice a week. Um, but just like a, I found this great little like 20 minute stretch video on YouTube that I've been following. It's just like a combination of just like some basic daily mobility stretches as well as some um, basic yoga stuff. Um, and I've found it to be one really like just mentally re relaxing to take that 20 minutes of, of stretching time. And then also just my body feels better the more consistently I do it. So stretch four times a week. It's one of the personal goals and hopefully that will kind of help out a little bit on, on the golf course as well, just being a little bit more, more flexible and more mobile. Um, and then, uh, we're going to go, let's see, let's last one. I'm going to share, uh, wake up at five thirty three times a week. Um, I'm a morning person. So it, there's a lot of times when I'm up at five 30, just laying in bed anyway. Um, so I kind of figured why not, especially on the days that I don't have to be up that early to go to work. Um, why not get out of bed and, and make those first couple hours of the day productive when I'm awake anyway. So rather than being in and out of sleep for an hour and a half or so, get up, make a cup of coffee at five 30. And maybe that's when I get some reading in early in the morning, or that's when I get my stretching in. So I think that the waking up at five 33 times a week is going to help me accomplish a lot or help me get closer to accomplishing some of my other goals. Um, so that's kind of the biggest reason behind that one being productive early in the morning. I like that. I'm just picturing a, a silhouette of Eric with the sun rising in the background with a cup of coffee and a yoga mat. Just, yeah. you know, a little, just a little, you know, time to yourself. Um, yeah. you know, I, I agree. I'm like, I'm sort of a morning person. I, I mean, I, when I'm up, it's great. And I call myself a morning person, but then I also struggle to get out of bed. So trying to find an identity on that end, um, <laughs> but <laughs> we're, we're beyond the point here, but uh, I'll, I'll do some personal goals here. Um, I, Eric, I, I'm very aligned with some of the things you had to say there. Um, I put work out four times a week and I'm going to put a little caveat on that. That means two times in the gym and two times outside. I'm going to take advantage of living in this state of Colorado I'm going to get out and do a hike and do a I'm gonna walk. I'm going to run. I'm going to go play nine holes of golf at six 30 in the morning, whatever that looks like, but get myself to do it. Um, you know, and I think for, for someone who enjoys going to a brewery or going out to dinner or going to a game, that's going to be a difficult one for me. Um, because I do like to spend a lot of my free time doing other things. So, um, this, this is one that not only I think is, is good, physically but also mentally is kind of carving out some time to to do some of that uh and i think eric's point of getting up early and maybe knocking some of those things out um is going to be my recipe for it i think <laughs> if i left working out you know for seven o'clock at night it's not going to happen right. um you know so i'm doing it in the morning and you know but also re realizing that like a workout doesn't have to be an hour like it can be 30 minutes of stretching one day, it can be, you know, a two hour hike, whatever that looks like, but just, you know, being flexible about what, in what form it looks like, but being consistent. Um, and then I'm going to call this next one, like one new, you know, whether that's, I'm kind of saying one new restaurant, one new city, one new town, one new region, one new activity, but like every month I want to do something new. You know, and some months are going to be easier than others. Some months I'm going to do 10 things that are new, but just kind of pushing myself to do some new things and, um, you know, take advantage of living in a new place and, um, you know, not, not being in this comfort of like having a million friends out here, like just go do some new things, meet some new people, uh, you know, be new, be new and be authentic kind of in that world. Um, and then I think one one that I do quite often already, but I, I really want to be consistent about cooking dinner at home Monday through Thursday. And honestly, I do that 95% of the time. So this is not like uh, something that's going to be all that difficult, but I really have, I mean, I, I've enjoyed cooking for a long time, but I've really found a ton of enjoyment in making new things and maybe looking at a recipe and then kind of just like, you know, not sticking to the recipe, but kind of seeing some of the 
some of the things they're doing in it and, you know, the techniques or whatever that looks like. And, you know, Monday through Thursday is my opportunity to kind of explore in the kitchen and, you know, perfect some of those staples and then also try some, try some new things. Um, you know, not going to hold myself accountable doing it seven days a week because that's not realistic. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to achieve my other goals of doing new things if I did that. Um, but uh, that's something I definitely think I can do. And it's also a good excuse to just like not, not work late, just like, hey, I got to go home and cook a good dinner and do something new. Hey, you can always log back on if they really need you, but you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah I, they'll, I, they'll just call me at like 10 o'clock if something's really <laughs> that important. Yeah, they'll call you. They'll, they'll ask you about it tomorrow if it's that important. But we're all very much aligned here with our personal goals, which makes sense considering we're all the same age. So, and, <laughs> and all have like very similar, you know, things we do outside of work and whatnot. But I got some. Let's see. I'll try not to repeat any because I did have a book one, but same as you, Eric. I think I did 12 last year. I read two and a half, maybe. So we lowered that down to 10. Strong um, effort. Strong yeah. effort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got really, we got lost with the house. We were, I think I read those first two by May. And then the other half book took me seven months. So um, we're going to try to work out before work twice a week. And what a workout can be is like, riding the bike got a bike downstairs like doing a yoga thing on youtube like eric mentioned it doesn't have to i'm not going to be doing some crazy p90x lifting weights thing before work but like just get up and do something that like wakes you up a little bit get it checked off the list like you said mike you're not going to work out when you get home at seven like it just it doesn't happen so i think if i do that if i set my goal for twice a week that is gonna just hopefully set a good enough routine to make me do it a couple more times along the way as well. So work out before work twice a week. I want to cook 10 new meals, recipes, something of that nature. Um, I've just, I always find it really interesting when I just like see something on TV or whatever and just, or TikTok or whatever, and just be like, I'm going to try making that. And then you kind of Google it, you get the recipe, whatever. And like going through that process, I enjoy it. It's like, usually healthier when you cook something like that from whether it's from scratch, whatever you want to call it. It's good practice. Good thing to know, you know, get the house. Now you learn some things to do, you know, Uh, domesticate yourself, right? Yeah. Educate, you know, it's a nice, it's a good like skill to have, you know, Oh, I can make this, whatever. Um, Expand. It's part of the new thing too, right? Like just try some new foods, whatever, make some new recipes, try things I normally wouldn't eat, whatever it is. And then I want to travel to, one new state or destination town etc once a quarter so new place whether it's like just going to dinner spending the day a weekend etc once a quarter new destination it can be something in connecticut if i haven't done it before but i want to try to push myself to try you know new states new regions etc but something new once a quarter um just to again just travel don't have a ton of responsibilities besides work and like just kind of my daily life. I don't have kids or dogs or anything like that. So I got to take advantage of that freedom and like travel now while I can. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I think that, uh, Matt, you ever, Matt, you've ever been to Colorado? Nope. We're going to, that's going to be Q4. It sounds like maybe Q3. <laughs> I think maybe Q3 Colorado. Yeah. yeah a little Q3 Colorado. Check that one off. That'd be a good one to, I think it would help all of our goals. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, just you're right. That, that knocks off at least that that's a month of new, you're going to go to a new restaurant. You probably try a new recipe, new you know, a new act, new activity. So Morning yoga every day. <laughs> hey, we got a, we got a nice little outdoor patio action. Um, Let's do like a 6am hike. Just get that poke, done before work yeah. starts. Check. You poke, you, yeah. you poke your, you poke your head out over here. You might be able to see the mountains while you're doing your more, more uh, morning yoga. So who knows? All righty. Anything on 2023 goals, golf season? Anything that we missed that we want to get out there before we kind of dive into our uh, our Januarys of new goals and new uh, routines? One one second. I'm just checking if it's a leap year this year. <laughs> Of course, I can't believe I forgot to do that. <laughs> hmm. No, it's not a leap year. So, um, four days in, three hundred sixty-one more days to get this stuff done, fellas. So, um, 
you don't get that extra year, so don't bank on it. Or that extra day, so <laughs> got to get to work now. That's all I got to say. I'm going to start. I think I'm going to apply a sticky note method, too, because I'm a big, like, sticky note guy with work tasks and whatnot, and I hate having sticky notes all over my desk, but so it makes me do the thing. So I'm going to just put them all over my desk here at home, and hopefully it'll motivate me to – at least fill it with like checking things off the list or progress on these things and replace, you know, cause I think if it just sits in the notes on my phone, I'll, I'll very easily be sitting here in April and being like, ah, shit, I forgot about all. <laughs> I'll have to read t- 10 books in eight months as opposed to 12 months. So. <laughs> all right, fellas. Well, it was a pleasure catching up. Happy new year, 2023. We are off and running and looking forward to, accomplishing some of these goals whether it's personal golf professional bogey proof for us whatever it may be looking forward to getting golf going again in 2023 cheers boys cheers